we've spent the last few weeks looking at how other people's moods can affect our ability to be the best version of ourselves. Today we start looking at how we can be the one that sabotages our own success. If we let our negative experiences in our life become our limiters as we move forward, then we will not achieve our full potential. In fact, life can just become a struggle if we're just dragging the past behind, living with remorse, regrets, loss and all the other emotions that can get stuck within us. Life can be hard and if the knocks keep coming we can sometimes feel like what's the point and before we know it we could have just given up. Our internal attitude has then become the silent mood hoover in our own lives. And often we just don't realise it. We're not depressive or down on others. We've just lost the wind out of our sails. And we just end up not living life to our full potential. Let's look at someone who didn't give up, but battled through life and health issues. And is an inspiration to all of us. Jen always dreamed of becoming a detective with the police force and from a child she was fascinated with all things connected with this. Then going on to choose subjects at university to support this dream career. The challenges of parents splitting up and the downward spiral of her mum's health both emotionally and physically after this was hard for Jen but she never lost her dream. As Jen was growing up, she also started to find certain things difficult to do due to stiffness in her joints, particularly in her hips and knees. And the normal childhood sports became a challenge for her. It was put down as growing pains and then went undiagnosed for many years. This often meant Jen felt the weaker version of everyone else but she still kept pushing herself in all that she did. After university, Jen went travelling. This is when her health issues came to a head. By the time she got to Thailand, Jen couldn't even straighten her right hand flat or make it into a fist. Jen's swollen fingers looked like they might have an infection, so she went to the doctors as soon as they landed in Australia. He took one look at them and said, I know what it is and you're not going to like it. They referred her to a rheumatologist and was diagnosed with ankylosing spondylysis, which causes inflammation of the joints in the spine and pelvis, as well as swelling in the soft tissue. It's an autoimmune disease. The immune system mistakenly thinks there's a problem in the joints and sends white blood cells attacking healthy tissues and causing swelling, stiffness and pain. Jen was also diagnosed with psoriatic arthritis and it was made clear that these problems would not go away. It was so bad, Jen had to stay in Perth for eight months with the support of her now husband and his best friend, getting her condition under control. Even though it was full of many emotional and physical challenges for Jen, she didn't give up. She went on to have some amazing experiences on the rest of their trip. It would have been so easy to have given up and gone home, but Jen stayed strong and pushed through the challenges returning home a different person. Having grown so much through her experiences, Jen was determined not to let her diagnosis affect her life negatively. However, when she applied to join the police force, she was shocked to find that they instantly refused her due to her health conditions. After all that Jen had been through, and still being so young, this might have pushed even the strongest person into a negative submission. 
But no, Jen kept going and started applying for jobs that even slightly interested her, which at the time was mostly admin jobs. Jen chose to go to a publishing house, started off picking and packing book orders in the warehouse and doing general admin for a company. Even though Jen was still dealing with her health conditions, she worked her way up to group production manager, managing the design teams across the country's different imprints. Then after having an extra diagnosis of fibromyalgia, it meant every day was a struggle and work-life balance got distorted. So then Jen took the brave decision to go freelance and start her own company, Fuzzy Flamingo. Jen adapted her home office to suit her needs. The desk raises and lowers, enabling standing and sitting for work and her company continues to go from strength to strength as well as having two small children to care for and the ups and downs of life to contend with. A final note from Jen is from C.S. Lewis. There is far, far better things ahead than we have left behind. I thought my dream was in the police, but in having that door closed, I had several open that were even better. Don't give up if things aren't working. Change direction and you might find yourself looking at a better view. What an inspiration Jen is to all of us her drive and determination through many adversities shows great strength and something we should all strive to follow. If you'd like to read about her life in more depth, then please use the link to preview her book in full. No matter what life can throw at us, it's important to see this is not the only direction we can follow and that adaption is the key to success. Trying and failing is another step closer to success. So never be afraid to admit when things aren't going right or they're not working for you. As the time you waste will only stop you from finding the true path. We can't follow the path of others. We have to carve out our own way forward. Sometimes we we do come to a crossroads like Jen and have hard decisions to make. Don't get stuck at these points in life. Any direction is better than no direction. Life doesn't come with a manual. In fact, if it did, it would be just like a highly complex flat pack furniture. Too hard to decipher and many steps have to be repeated as you've gone off track with it. Like building furniture, once you've done one, the next one will be easier. And life is just the same. The more you try, the better you become. Learning from taking the wrong direction ultimately will help you find the right one for you. Don't fear the process either. It will only make the instructions feel more like destructions. Just relax. Start listening to your gut and heart and that inner instinct as listening to ourselves will definitely help. Next week we'll look more at these disruptive personal habits and patterns which we can be living with. Finding more solutions to help you diffuse them and help you get on the right path. Thanks for dropping by.